and this will be a Zoom, uh, YouTube live stream. Okay, welcome, welcome parents. I'm here, we're here for the 2022 Summer Bridge Program Orientation. Uh, we have our directors, our director and our assistant director of the program. I gotta figure out a title for you, Brother Larry. I don't know what to do. Anyway, uh, Nicole Johnson's here. She's the best, go ahead, that's Nicole. She's like first officer of Star Trek, call her number one whatever you want to call it. She's been that way for years. She was amazing support. And Larry Scape is here. Seems like we're lying on our sports team, so he's allowed to be here. He's a good guy. He's going to be running the floor for the summer program under uh, the oversight of Nicole. And I think uh, Nicole has a lot. Of, Nicole, how many summer bridge programs this for you? Can you even count as a teacher or whatever? When you help Miss Pope, you remember? And throw your microphone, your microphone. Since 2009, that was my first summer. <laughs> 13, hey, hey, you guys, parents, she put up with me for that long. She knows she's pretty good. All right, thank you. And uh, parents, if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the Q&A. I will immediately stop and answer. At the end, we'll do a more open Q&A, So I know you may have questions as we go through the slides, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, Larry, with your permission, I'll start with the director's presentation, then I'll have a more detailed presentation. I have a few things I wanna go over from a director's standpoint uh, that I think we should, given the fact this is sort of a historic time for us at West A, I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll get that to you in one second, all right. All right, it's kind of historic because we really haven't had any in-person events at our North Campus for probably going on over two years. And we were selected to be the only group to start this early. Other groups are starting later in July. And uh, obviously a lot of things we're gonna do here are gonna help us with determining how other groups should use the facility. Because we have a few things that are happening in addition to COVID. Um, we, we, uh, we're in a construction project, so the youth center no longer exists. We don't have the parking lot either. If you've driven down Crenshaw, you were probably shocked to see that. If you didn't know, you'll find out when you come up. We're no longer in the youth center or the big lot. We're across the street, what we call, and you'll see in a moment, the multi-purpose building. And we have to show you how to approach, how to drop off, how to pick up. That's very important. And uh, if you want to stop in, what you can do to park and come in, we have limited parking, I'll show you. We, want to keep, we wanted to keep it so you didn't have to drop off down the street at our main garage, which is over a little over a block away. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's in fact start, start with the drop off and pick up plan for the facility, okay? We're at 3045 Crenshaw Boulevard. We got some questions about that. That's where we're located with a lot of people who've never used our program. So it's 3045 Crenshaw Boulevard. And here's North and East to give you an orientation on it. There's Crenshaw Boulevard, Jefferson Boulevard's here. And Crenshaw Boulevard is right in front of the church. So that gives you an idea of the area we're talking about. We'll say Jefferson and Crenshaw a lot of times. And right here off Jefferson, there's a Chevron gas station to give you an idea. And here's a staff parking lot. And here's basically where our facility is right here. This is where West End is. We call it the North Campus. It consists of the sanctuary. And I didn't label it, but this is the crystal room right here. We may have some meetings for parents there. We don't know yet. But I'll put the sanctuary because that's probably where we'll end up. We're going to have a table in the courtyard just for temperature check. The Summer Bridge Program classroom building is really called the multi-purpose building. It's located just north of a plaza. This is an outdoor plaza here. I'll have more to say about that a little later. 
And basically, when you approach the church, we come up with a way for you to get in and out of the facility quickly and without having a lot of traffic delay. The first way you might approach us is the way you have to be the quickest. So we'll have people on the curb to help. There's going to be car drop drop off zone. That's hard to say. Car drop off zone in front of the, the north campus, which is across the street from our youth center. The youth center is back here in this area here. If you're wondering, I'll bring my cursor down back over here, right? But we're across the street on the west side of the street. So that's one drop off zone, and you'll continue on down Crenshaw. Another drop off zone is if you come up Jefferson, approach it from the west or the you guys could approach from the east too. There's a car drop off zone in what we call the staff parking lot. That staff lot is going to be cleared at five o'clock. So, probably if you have a class after five, you could use that lot. It's going to probably clear around 4 30, but we'll see. Um, but be clear enough in any case to drop off people because we're going to open this gate up on this side. Many of you didn't know there's a rolling gate on the Crenshaw side. We're going to open that gate up and you'll be able to come out on the Crenshaw. That's the second drop-off zone. To the east, there's a third drop-off zone. It's at the parking lot across the street, okay? We still have a temporary right-of-way there. We're gonna have a guard over there to guard and watch it. But it's the Burger King and Theater lot. You could pull onto that lot from the east. There's different alleys approaching from the backside there. You could approach that way and you could drop your student off there. So I'm considering that another drop-off zone. Then you can turn right there and head up Crenshaw. Please just make a right turn there, although you could make a left if it was safe. I advise you to make a right because we'll have a little bit of congestion at a couple points. We have just enough people in the summer program, but we could create an interesting traffic situation. So when you're dropping off in front of Crenshaw, try to do that as quickly as you can. Once again, Christine, I have no visibility to the chat. So let me know if there's a Q&A or a chat question. You got to watch both. Yeah, not a problem. All right, good. You remember this one now, right? The webinar. <laughs> All right, okay. So when they drop off over in the car drop off zone over here, they'll walk out down the sidewalk into the plaza and on into the building. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely uh, allow students to assemble in the courtyard. I'll talk about that when I get to the protocols. Okay, there you go. Uh, you can also come from the drop-off zone in front of the church or from across the street, the same result. Just to give you an idea, the Chevron station is right there. I'm gonna mention that again. It's right there. Don't drop off in the Chevron station. I don't think he'll like us very much, okay? Drop off in that staff lot as opposed to the Chevron station, okay? So that's how the student drop-off and pickup will go I hope that was helpful. A couple of you asked about that. If you want to come visit a teacher or visit the school, uh, you can come right here to this Burger King Theater lot and park and just wait for the light, walk across the street. We will have a, a worker or two around the front of the church helping kids across the street and that kind of thing. I'm trying to look for some orange vests. Some of our staff will help out just for that part, help people get up to the facility. Let's talk about health procedures for the Omicron variant. I don't say the C word anymore. I've studied the biology of it enough to know that this thing is totally mutated and it's actually much milder as you probably know, and which causes very few hospitalizations, which has caused the county to change its protocol and allowed our public and private school students to remove their masks in class, which really has helped learning tremendously. I know I have teacher friends that have been glad about that. We'll talk about that. So at home before class, if students are sick, meaning they're sneezing, sneezing, coughing, or aches, please keep them home and email us. Some of the teachers have it in their syllabus, in the syllabi. Oh, that reminded me. Hey, Larry, is uh, Andrea in yet? Is Andrea in there yet, Larry? Not yet. I'm trying to get her in now. Just, yeah, she's going to be a little challenge there, okay? All right, please keep them home. If that happens, you can email us at virtualhc.eep at gmail.com. We will see if there's classwork we can send home via email. Or you can work directly with the teacher. So most of the teachers are going to have access to your email addresses. We have never done that in the past. We will this year. 
and you might be able to communicate with that teacher. At the enrichment class, if a student exhibits symptoms after they get here, they're, and they have to be pretty serious, but they have, they've got to have some symptoms, we would have to move them or her to a separate work area that we've prepared right next to my office on the same floor. On the We're on the second floor of that building, by the way. We'll guide you up there, the students up there. Uh, him or her will work in a separate work area, and we'll give you a call, let you know about it, see what you want to do. The student will get work from the class if that should happen. So we're putting some of it on, it's on all of us really to um, watch for symptoms and that type, even though Omicron is not nearly as serious as the other variants were a year ago. Protocols, I didn't want to call them that, but I think that's what they are. You mask, they're going to be in their masks when they arrive. There'll be a fever check at the gate, even though Omicron does not have a symptom of fever. I checked everywhere, but we're going to check at the gate really for flu and things like that. Fever for other reasons, actually. And by the way, if they fail the fever check, oftentimes students who are uh, very active or running around or just it's a super hot day, we'll wait for a second and make sure. In class only, the masks are optional. Uh, I think most of our teachers would prefer to teach in such a way as they can see you. If I know I'm teaching calculus, I wanna want the students to be able to talk freely and. Our rooms are spatially distanced by seating the way we have them set up. As long as the students don't move the desk and we'll make sure that doesn't happen. They're nice and spatial and they can learn there when they're done and leave, then they can put their mask on temporarily. It's kind of like what we did in restaurants at once upon a time. We wore the mask and then we took it off to eat. And well, they're, they're gonna take it off when they're learning. That's a form of eating, I guess. We'll have some hand sanitizer available room for those who want to use that. And our custodians are going to really keep those rooms super clean during this time. And any questions, Christina, just let me know. Now I want to talk about a pretty important part of scheduling and planning, and that's our pre-algebra and algebra courses. So we're going to have pre-algebra and algebra. And the way it's going to happen is this way. First of all, the teachers, just Siri Liggins. We're going to introduce the teachers later. 4.15 to 5.15 is the first period. The second period is 5.30 to 6.45. This is for the most part, six through, uh, rising six through a few ninth graders anyway. So the pre-algebra and the algebra will both meet the first period. You might wonder, well, how can just Siri teach most both? Well, He's going to be instructing the pre-algebra students, and we have to keep this ordering. I'll explain why. Well, you'll know why after this view graph. The math instruction and exercises, that's where the teacher's going to be, and that's, that's the teacher to Siri. In the second period, they'll have ed, what we call ed-ready computer diagnostic and computer training in the 5.30 to 6.45 period. So the algebra students can have ed-ready the first period. So the first day of class, the algebra students will have Ed ready. They'll be doing a diagnostic test that first day. We'll say a little bit about what I need from you to get that done and just a couple of view graphs. There'll be math instruction and exercise. You can see that when one's getting instructed, the other's in diagnostic. And that's very important that we start exactly this way in this ordering, as you'll see in just a moment. Because the eighth and ninth writing class meets this first period, we may have students that wish to, uh, wish to attend this class. Um, let me see if I get this right. The eighth and ninth is, somebody help me out, I'm a little stuck here. We have the eighth and ninth and sixth and seventh writing. I think Larry, those are the right times for the, for the classes, right? Yeah, that, yeah, those are the right times. All right, so the eighth and ninth writing class um, is usually algebra students. It's gonna be algebra students. So they would just miss Ed Ready, or I'm sorry, what would they miss here? I'm a little bit disoriented here. Uh, they would miss the, uh, the the lecture, right? The teaching, the teaching instruction by just here. Is eighth and ninth the first one? Mm, or is it sixth uh, and seventh? So for eighth and ninth grade writing, if they're at 4 p.m., they will be missing Ed Ready while- six, Right. Seventh grade 
uh, That's it. more likely pre-algebra yeah. students. Yeah, this wasn't so clear. They will be missing Ed Ready as well for five. Right. So, so if you're in writing, you miss Ed Ready the first time through. But we came up with a scheme where they can get Ed Ready too. So once again, if they're eighth and ninth, you know, writing, no problem. They go to the writing class, right? And they'll miss their Ed Ready, right? And then the second period they can be taught. But then watch how they get Ed Ready, please. They get it 650 to 745. They can come to lab at that time and get it. So it'll be a sort of long day for those students that are in both classes. They're in, but now a lot of students are just doing pre-algebra or algebra, okay? And that's fine. They'll just do that and they'll be done. But there'll be others that are going to do a writing class and they'll have to come over here and do some Ed Ready diagnostic. That's pretty important um, the first day because they got these, there'll be students over here the first day learning the staff, doing their diagnostic. And we may be in a diagnostic mode for two days, who knows? The good thing is they'll still get instruction every day. We start our instruction right away in our program. We don't start everybody with the diagnostic. We'll just take the extra day. Math students who are in sixth and seventh writing or eighth and ninth writing should go to those classes, go to the classes and the additional math period at 650. Okay. I'll see if Christina, if there's any questions there. I'll wait for a second on this view graph. We have quite a few. <laughs> any questions, Christina? No? I don't see questions, Deacon. Okay, on the Q&A or the other. Okay. And anytime, parents, you can put a question there. She'll definitely let me know. So you can see I put the last arrow to connect to this box here. Math students are in sixth and seventh writing, eighth, ninth, and the additional math period here. There's another situation like that we'll get later. So more, there are other preparations that are unique to pre-algebra, algebra, and algebra two for those who wish to do that. We'll talk about that. Please create a Gmail email address for your student for this program as follows. So they're in pre-algebra, algebra, algebra two. Get the username and the last initial csu.sai at gmail.com. You need to set it up. I'm going to email you about that too. You need to set it up. So if, you're, if your student's name is um, John Brown, it's jbrowncsu.sai at gmail. They need to have a unique CSU email address because when they're doing their um, Ed Ready exercises, it allow the teacher to go uniquely in and see how they're doing. You can go to www.gmail.com in case you're not sure to do this. So that's homework for parents of, of for pre-algebra, algebra, and algebra two students. I'll remind you again by email. I've already emailed the pre-algebra and algebra about a form we're gonna need. Actually, algebra two also. You can email quindavis.eep at gmail from the email address above, from the student's email address. Um, that way we can record that it's completed. Just say, hey, we got it. This is my son, you know, my you give your child's name, email address, and we'll make sure that it's straight. But we know that they all will look like this. We, in my email, I'm going to suggest uniquely what it should be for each person. I figured out how to do that. This email address will be used for Ed Ready program setup. And now uh, that you'll be guided through that the first day. We'll be dry running it among ourselves very shortly. Finally, please complete the IRB consent form that I recently sent to you. I, I sent that out the other night. I need you to look that over and complete that form and send your student with that form the first day of class. Again, it's pre-algebra, algebra, and algebra two. So I want to give our algebra two students a chance to do it ready as well. All right, I'll move to the next slide here. Here's the presentation plan for the few, I think it's like two of you, that are taking chemistry and algebra two. I think it's two students, maybe three, I'm not sure. This is how this will work. And that worked out pretty well. We want you to go to your chemistry class. We know it's meeting the same time algebra two meets. So a similar situation here, you're gonna have Ed Ready plus some Saturday morning teaching workshops if they like to take those. We think the Ed Ready plus the workshops is the way to go. Um, we're gonna decide how we present that and do that very shortly internally. 
math students who are in chemistry and algebra two prep need to go to this here. I think it's only two or maybe only two now. I think one dropped and had both. Um, we, by the way, if you're in a dilemma, which one to take, I would do the chemistry. There's more Fs and Ds coming out of chemistry prep because of the applied math. Um, I, I think I really would. Yeah, chemistry was one of the classes, chemistry and geometry were one of the classes that we that we originally created this program so we were getting too many Fs. And we still see that when they don't get some kind of prep in the summer. So if you're in a dilemma, stay where you are, stay with the chemistry. Maybe you can, they can attend a couple of workshops on Saturday to stay sharp with their math. I would let them do that, okay? Let's talk about the high school writing plan. Is Andrea in yet? She's not there yet, right? I'm Andrea. here. Oh, you are, okay, good. Did yeah. you just, I just wanted you to see this view graph. Yeah. Uh, I got this changed, not off the press. We are gonna have a special weeks one and two curriculum. We got approval to do some SAT lessons for the high school students that are taking those classes. We're gonna give you some lessons in how to do critical reading and grammar from our partner, Princeton Review. We are all Princeton Review certified instructors. I'm gonna have one other teacher with me help me with that. She confirmed she could help. So we're gonna have some practical practice questions we're gonna do. We're gonna do some test taking techniques with the reading, uh, critical reading and the grammar. And we're gonna do uh, the Princeton Review prep techniques, not just any old technique. We're gonna use the actual techniques they'll be using on the SAT. So if you have a student that's taking the PSAT in October, I think it will help them. That's a bonus thing we're doing with our high school writing. Um, since I do have Andrea here, I, could you just say a word about what you're gonna be doing weeks three through five? It looked pretty good. I wanna, why don't you go ahead and go over that? Yes, so for the eighth and ninth grade writing, um, the youth are gonna be writing a research paper. And so I'll be walking them through the steps of how to write a research paper. Um, every Monday, the every, every Tuesday, sorry, we'll have grammar lessons. Um, Tuesday through Wednesday will be um, writing lessons. And then Fridays will be what's called writing workshops. And so the students will write in class um, the parts of, of, of that research paper, and it will be peer reviewed by the other students and also peer reviewed, not peer reviewed by me, but also reviewed by me virtually once they type up that assignment. Um, so that's the format from that class. We'll always have games and icebreakers as well, just to get the youth um, in a fun and joyous mood. And then as far as the other writing course that I'm doing for high school writing, they will be writing an argumentative essay. Um, this is mainly because they, some of the youth will be taking the SAT and one of the writing component, components on the SAT um, is to be able to write a, an essay. Um, and usually it is argumentative. So they will be writing, writing an argumentative essay, same format as eighth and ninth grade class. Yeah, and that's kind of like college writing too, Andrea, where you get an argumentative essay and that's good. That's good to be getting that in the summer. I don't think they do that enough in high school. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, we'll be introducing her formally later, but I couldn't resist when I showed this. Let's talk about our advanced math class. It's a little different. I thought I'd cover things that are different. It's gonna be online. It's our only online class. We only have one class that's online compared to last year where everybody was. Uh, and this really helped us to get the teacher we really that we really want in there. I don't know if he's here, uh, but we're gonna cover pre-calculus, math integrated three and FST topics. That's function, stats and trig. And he's yeah, uh, uh, Deacon, I'm here. Great, great. hey Paul. Yeah. All right, hey, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll say something to him in a minute. I want, him to, I want to ask him a question in a minute. So Paul's gonna teach that three week class. Um, he's gonna be emailing you a couple times before the class. We wanna get the most out of that online experience. Paul's very skilled. I think you're going to have a good experience. I include the Zoom information here to show you how it will look, but, he, but he's going to email that over to you very shortly. Actually, by the next day or so, he'll email it over. And so you'll actually start on the 29th online. I think that class is seven, right, Paul? Yeah, should be, yeah, about seven to eight, 15. Seven to eight, 15. Very good. All right. 
And I thought that was a little unusual. I thought I could write. So that's basically all I have there. But Larry, let me stop and share. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, again, if there's any questions anywhere doing here about any of what I presented, it was a lot I showed you. Um, we're going to email you a lot of the information too to remind you right before the school starts. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to your friend and mine. <laughs> and also, Deacon, I think I might need to be made a host again. Oh, yeah. Co host right. again. I cut you off, man. Hold on. It's all good. Uh, let me see. How do I do that? I got to think about it. Deacon, you also have some questions? Oh, yeah. Let's do those right now then. Go ahead. So first one is, what happens if the student misses the first week of um, class? Well, that's the good thing about summer enrichment program. Um, we're not going to fail them, right? It's an enrichment program. Uh, um, but if they have to miss, they have to miss. Just negotiate with the teacher is my advice to make sure that um, negotiate the teacher to get the work when they're away or come back, however you want to handle it. Okay, is my advice if they're going to go away for the first week? I think there are one or two people like I mean, it's, that's something that comes up in the summer enough. I would say if you start getting to two and three weeks, I say three weeks missed, it, it's not as much worth it, but at least you get some enrichment. Some enrichment is better than none at all, that's for sure. All right, was there any other questions? Follow up if you had more questions on that. Okay, proceed. Am I cleared? Yeah, another question is, um, what grade do students take chemistry? It varies, but it typically is 11th grade. Make sure you find out, that's a good point. Make sure you find out from these counselors, what are they taking in the fall? Hold these counselors accountable. They're gonna go away July 4th, you won't see them for a month. Make sure your students taking the class that they're prepping for. So if they're in chemistry prep, it's because they're gonna take chemistry. And usually it's 11th grade, almost always. Sometimes it's 10th grade, but usually it's 11th, okay? And I'd have to know more. If you can put the school in the chat, I can tell you what it is. If I knew what school it was, I could tell you, isn't that insane? But I could if I knew the school. So could you quickly type that in there for Christina? Quickly, hold on there. What school is it? Okay. Post that back. Laces. Okay, if it's laces, you could, if it's laces, you'll have it either 10th or 11th. Okay, so you got, you really got to hold that school accountable because it may be that she can take a writing class instead if it's not chemistry yet. Um, they usually took biology as ninth graders. Sometimes they put them in 10th and chemistry, sometimes they do it 11th. If it's laces, it could be either. Really hold those counselors accountable. They're getting away July 4th. Don't let them get away. Call them tomorrow. Call the school tomorrow. They should have told you. You should know what they're going to take next year. They don't always do that until late July when they come back. All right. I know they're, I know counselors are busy, but you got to help them. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful there. Christina, anyone else? Um, yeah, there's another question. Uh, I think uh, by Sylvia. Um, she wants to know, yes. should her eighth grader take algebra or geometry? If people ask, I say algebra. Okay. Just because you, you cannot have too wide of a base. You need to widen the algebra base. If you're asking that question, it's because they didn't ace it. I really think that they should take algebra and widen their strength in their base before they walk in that geometry class, if you're asking, especially since it's an eighth grader. If it was a ninth or 10th, I might think differently, but I think but I think I'd like to see that student take the, some of the CSU summer algebra stuff and, and do that Ed Ready system and really help them out. Just eat, just shoot me an email and I'll change the class for you. Okay, okay great. Anyone else? Yeah, sorry, there's one more. Um, what time do biology classes start? Uh, biology is seven o'clock to 8.15. They're gonna cover that in a minute. Okay, that's it. Yep. Okay. And it's college biology. You'll see why later. Is Rachel here tonight? Yes, I'm here. Oh, 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 oh. I'm saving you for that. That, that okay, I'm saving you that you're gonna say a few words about what you're gonna do. You're gonna do okay. it the same way you always do, right? Yes. Ooh -wee. <laughs> I'm praying my prayers are going out now. Oh gosh. <laughs> 
good at having you here. Uh, Gay Davins here. Uh, materials. Uh, we'll talk about materials in a minute. Your teachers will tell you specific things, but since I have the mic, I'll talk about calculus. I need a calculator with functions and trig functions on it uh, for calculus. Uh, that's what they'll need for calculus. They need to have four number, four number of uh, two pencils and a sharpener. And we can just go at it. We can learn. I'll give them a good notebook to bring into their calculus class. But teachers will tell you, they'll let you know what they're going to need tonight, uh, maybe, or they'll email. The teachers are going to have the email addresses of the students earlier than they've ever had them. I'm actually going to take them right from the raw data in the spreadsheet this year. So we'll get that to teachers. They'll tell you if they need things. If they don't say anything, just I would bring a notebook and pencils, pencils and pens, right? Notebook, pencils, pens, if you don't hear anything. But I think we cover that in a minute. Anything else? Just a good questions. Keep them, keep them flowing if they're out there. All right, we'll Alrighty. continue. Yeah, go ahead and let's continue. Yes, we're good to go? Okay. Sure. So yeah, so we'll just go over the little program overview of the Summer Bridge program and also West Angeles Church of God in Christ. So the Summer Enrichment Program is a ministry program of West Angeles Church Education and Enrichment Program Ministry. And it's offered in accordance with the Urban Initiatives of Church of God in Christ International and subsidized by West Angeles Church of God in Christ Trustee Board. And we've offered this since 2003. I'll go to the next slide. And who are we? So West Angeles Church Education and Enrichment Program, EEP. We're a ministry of West Angeles Church of God in Christ by Bishop Charles E. Bre Charles e. Blake, excuse me. And we are the largest community and faith-based enrichment program in Southern California. Maybe the only church-based full-time one. I'm not sure if we still are deacon, but uh, I'll let us have that. And we yeah. have served, <laughs> and we have served over 640 families in the last year. And I'm sure that that has probably gone up since this, uh, since that data has been updated. You're absolutely and right. Our, and our programs include after-school program, um, which was virtual last year, and will be coming up again this upcoming school year. So be on the lookout for that. Parent college access and high school support, admissions and financial aid, and much more, which will also be covered later in our presentation. And here's the location. If you're not familiar with our North Campus, this is the West Angeles North Campus, and that's the address there. And all the classes will be held here, besides the one virtual class that we're gonna be having that'll be held online. And as Deacon covered before, we'll have designated locations for dropping off and picking up your students. And we'll also have volunteers and security officers present to escort students back and forth. So you don't have to worry about the safety or anything of your child. They'll definitely be protected while they're there on our campus. And here's the components overview. So we have enrichment classes in math, science, and language, which are Spanish and English writing. Uh, we have two college readiness sessions for parents, which we'll cover later on in our slides which kind of touch upon some of the other things, things that we offer as far as college readiness and uh, SAT and just college and career prep. So we'll go over that a little bit later on. We'll be offering college tours and these college tours will be on Mondays. So our schedule got turned around a little bit, but on Mondays is when the college tours will be offered and we'll let you guys know when those specific dates are. But I know we have one for at least LMU and Long Beach State as of now. And more may be offered, but as of now, those are two that we do have. And STEM activities will be held on Saturdays. So that's when we're gonna have some cool projects led by one of our instructors, his name is Yard. And on Saturdays, I believe, we're not sure on the time just yet, but we will get that information to you as soon as possible as well. All right, I'll hand it off to Nicole so she can go over this slide with you guys. Hi, um, so, we have the Director of Education and Enrichment Program, Deacon John Wilson. And then there are the coordinators, me and Larry. I'm now Nicole Haynes, officially. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, we apologize. No, that was just as of yesterday, though. So oh, OK, <laughs> so we're not there. And so, um, but <laughs> yes. Um, so Nicole Johnson, now Nicole Haynes. And so each class will have an instructor and at least one instructor's assistant. And so your child will have lots of support 
um, in the classroom and assistance to get through the course to make sure that they're prepared for next school year. We will also have volunteers on campus to kind of help run the day-to-day -day program. The courses that will be occurring this summer are in math, science, and language. So we have two sites, um, one in LA, one in Lakewood, the LA site. Um, these are the courses, pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra two, advanced math, calculus, chemistry, college biology, um, sixth and seventh grade writing, eighth and ninth grade writing, high school writing, and intro to Spanish. Um, now what's unique this summer, I think there is only one session per course. So make sure that you pay attention to the times of your course and get your student registered and in so that your student has a spot because we also are limiting the amount of students per class for safety reasons. Yep. Safety and health reasons. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you also wanna pay attention to the time periods of your course. So here are the three week courses and um, versus the five week courses. Um, Pre-algebra and algebra one. Um, not sure about algebra two based off what Deacon was saying earlier, but pre-algebra and algebra one, um, you are actually more of a six week course depending on your student's attendance. Um, just so that they can make sure that they do the amount of ed ready hours they need to complete. The algebra two will save five weeks. Okay. And so Deacon, can you inter uh, introduce our instructors? Oh, Badoba. I have to cheat and look on here. All right, here we go. All right, let's first, uh, in fact, go ahead and it will introduce officially Andrea. She's um, got that master's degree from GW and she has her undergraduate degree from Boise State. Uh, Andrea, uh, why don't you say hello? I know you covered the class. And why don't you tell, why don't you, 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 tell them, why don't you, tell them what your mat, what your degrees are in. I thought that might be interesting. Okay, cool. So my name is Andrea. Um, my undergrad is in public health and my master's degree is from the George Washington University in global public health. Um, and I, what am I, what else am I saying? I'm saying what I majored what in. What you in? Ah, okay. Yes. Um, but I also minored in Spanish in undergrad, right. um, studied abroad in Puerto Rico, um, lived in Guatemala for some time for the Peace Corps. Um, and also am a part-time entrepreneur. I own my own language school and I focus on developing bilingual youth and young adults. Um, and I will be teaching English writing and also um, Spanish one. I think we, we're calling it Spanish one, right? Intro to Spanish is what Intro we're to Spanish one. I right. like that. You know what? I really like that. Intro good. to Spanish. I, I was hoping um, you would. Um, as far as the English class goes, the two English class goes, the students will need to have a college rule composition notebook. We are taking it old school and I'm having my students do creative writing every single day um, in a composition notebook just to kind of um, brainstorm with them. And then they will need a pencil, actually, a pencil as well. Um, I'll provide all the other necessary components of the class. And um, in addition to that, cell phones for research purposes. Um, so if for the first time students can use their cell phones in, in one of my courses, I won't speak for the other teachers. As uh. far as, <laughs> I'll get in trouble for that. As far as Spanish goes, um, no supplies will be needed. Um, I will supply what the students need for that course. We will have fun activities and games to inspire our learning for all of those courses. And I really look forward to connecting in person with um, your youth. All right. Let's go to uh, another uh, great teacher. We have a great lineup. I feel like it's like top to bottom great. Uh, Christiana, you want to say a few words about sixth and seventh? Just give me an overview of the course. She's a graduate of LMU. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? 
<laughs> yes. Awesome. Good afternoon, or rather good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Miss Christiana Davis. This is my, I want to say, fourth year with the, yes. with the program, around my fourth year, and I'm excited to be returning this year as sixth and seventh grade writing instructor. Um, I currently serve as the middle school language arts director at Transfiguration School. Um, it's a small Catholic school in the Lamar Park area, so I'm very local. As Deacon mentioned, I'm a graduate of Loyola Marymount graduate student at Mount St. Mary's. I'll be graduating this. Oh, upcoming. that's right. Yes. So I'm really excited about that and very passionate about learning and language arts for that matter. So the course um, for sixth and seventh grade writing really will focus heavily upon developing expository and summary writing skills for sixth and seventh graders, which is really common core um, state standard heavy um, and prevalent and something that they really take into you know the fall. So I'm looking forward to harnessing that skill as well as throwing in some important reading, active reading strategies that students will receive um, so they will be doing some some reading um, throughout the summer as well, because I really believe that both of those skills work in tandem to create effective, strong writers. Oftentimes, students need to have those visual components in order for them to understand what the writing should look like. And that really comes from reading. So I'm looking forward to doing that as well. Um, for the course, students will need a writing utensil. I took the liberty of purchasing writing notebooks for all of my students in advance. So they'll receive that upon arrival next week. Um, but writing utensils, I'm going to provide more information about my technology kind of policy in my syllabus because I'm still, now that Andrea has spoken, I'm kind of inspired and I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have mm. cell phones. So <laughs> I'll kind of, and we'll think about that later. Um, but I, I'm very, very excited to work with your student and with your learner. And if you have any questions, um, you'll receive my syllabus, which will have my email in it. And I'll be reaching out to you all soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good. I see a question about eighth grade writing. That's the class Andrea will be teaching. She just spoke a moment ago. Uh, she's doing eighth and ninth and high school writing. Okay, those are two different classes. And uh, that's, that's she was speaking a minute ago. Okay, and now we go to the world's, oh, in Lakewood. Oh, yes. Uh, no writing in Lakewood, only math. It's pre-algebra and algebra. And I'm not sure if I see Sister Giselle yet. Uh, but I will look out. We'll do something there. All right, Rachel, it's only math in Lakewood, only pre-algebra and algebra. It's very narrow. It's only the summer algebra stuff. Rachel Sturgill, the world's smartest biology teacher. <laughs> Come on, Rachel. Rachel, oh, I like to say when people went to college. She went to UC Santa Cruz, and now she's in med school at USC. Come on, Rachel. Yeah, that's right. Hi, everyone. Um, so I will be teaching the chemistry and the biology college prep course. Um, I believe that this is my fourth year with the program now. Fifth. Um, fifth? This is your fifth. Yes. Yeah, see, I was thinking about that earlier I, and I, I think checked, it is fifth. I checked. It's your fifth. Because I think I started in 2018. Right. So, wow. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, um, so a little bit about the courses. Um, so for, you know, for both science courses, they're both very challenging. And so, um, you know, I, I preface this by saying that, um, um, you know, I encourage your students to, to stay dedicated to the material because however much work that they put into the material will be the benefit that they get out of it um, during the prep course. And so for chemistry, we're gonna be focusing mainly on the foundations that they're learning in the first semester of chemistry. Um, and a lot of the topics that will be built upon in the second semester of chemistry. And so um, it's a lot of calculation based. Um, I like to focus a lot on the math because I know that students really struggle with that um, and getting familiar with the periodic table and um, concepts of that sort. And then for the biology class, it is based on introducing students to the topics that are introduced in the first semester of college biology. And so college biology has um, a different way of applying material than high school biology. And so I focus a lot on higher level questions um, and multi-step questions that they'll be seeing in college um, and getting them to practice a lot of those analyzing skills and kind of higher order thinking skills that are going to be really important for them. So excited to be back um, and happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. I will be sending out a syllabus soon as well as um, materials that the students will need, which are very minor. Yeah, and I think students think, I want to say, Rachel, we, we had the side effect of it. It definitely helps an AP biology student. They come out of her class, they're always ace. 
Yeah, yeah, because I um I actually take a lot of my practice questions from AP tests and even college tests that I have kind of in my repertoire. So um, Ooh. um that's good to hear. Ooh, so parents, if they take college biology, they come in saying how hard it is. Let's let's make them stay and deal with it. It's not a grade, so they're gonna get a real good feel for what a college biology course feels like. Okay, uh, let's move to Paul Okobayeo. Paul. Paul is a graduate of USC. He's also an entrepreneur in enrichment, enriching math students. He's got some international contacts that are really cool. Paul, why don't you say hello for a minute and say just say a couple words about advanced math. Awesome. Um, hello, parents. My name is Paul. Um, as Deacon said, I graduated from USC. Um, majored in business administration, and then also in high school, I took various math courses, which is uh, AP Calculus, AP Stats, uh, Trigonometry, Algebra 2 Honors, Algebra 1 Geometry, and Continuing. Um, math's always been my favorite subject, and I'm looking forward to teach your, um, your, your uh, teach the students in, in the various levels in advanced math, whether it be imaginary numbers, pre-calculus, or just any areas. Um, as Deacon said, we'll be sending out a schedule so you guys are aware of the, the times and dates um, in terms of what, in terms of when the class will be, and I'll reach out to the parents um, so they know what um, what their child should have, and um, kind of just the syllabus in terms of when uh, exams will be and whatnot. Um, the class will be very collaborative, and we'll focus on kind of getting all the kids engaged so that they'll intrinsically be excited and uh, math will become ultimately their favorite subject. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And let's see who else do I have a teaching standpoint other than me. Uh, let's see, let's talk about some of these TAs and get the idea of what's going on with them. And we have some pretty good ones. First, we have Ileana, Ileani Lambe, who is a student. Hey, Ileani, is this your fourth year coming up? Um, I think it's my fifth. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. And how many years at Grand Canyon? Where are you there? Um, three years. You're going to your third year? Well, I'm three years, and then this is going to be my last semester. That's what I thought. Okay. So, Ileana Lambie has been with us for five years. She's going to be our TA for, uh, for sure for the math area. We're going to have her really flexible. Uh, she's going to work with mostly Jasiri with the summer algebra. And with the pre-algebra and algebra, I go to Jasiri in a minute. Jasiri, I didn't. Sorry about. I see you there. Um, and um, we're really happy to have her back. You want to say a couple words, Ileani, or are you cool? Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ileani Lambi, and I've been coming to this program since I was in high school. But I started working here around my junior year of high school. Um, they helped me not only help and give back to students in my community, but also to just get more involved with kids, which is what I enjoy doing. Um, right now, I am a senior at Grand Canyon University, and my major is government with an emphasis in legal studies. And um, I'm just here again because I love to teach math and I love to spend time with kids. That's definitely one of my favorite things to do is help educate children. So I'm just so glad and happy to be here. Wonderful. And then we have Jasiri, Jasiri Liggins, been with me a long time. I'm scared to ask him how long, because it'll make me feel old. But uh, he's a graduate of CSU Dominguez Hills. He's probably, he's like a Renaissance man. Uh, you know, Jasiri, you want to say a few words about uh, what you're doing here and talk, say a couple words to the parents? Yes, I'm Jasiri. I... I'm a recent college graduate of Cal State Dominguez Hills. I've been with the program for maybe, I say maybe six years. Uh, it's probably more, but we'll go with that. Maybe that, yes. I am, I've been a math tutor. I've also done math SAT prep. And yeah. You're an English expert too. I am also an English expert as well, yes. I graduated from Cal State with English literature, and I, but I also have a math background as well. Mm -hmm. College years. That's why I called you Renaissance man. <laughs> so him and I'll be getting together the next couple of days, planning some great stuff. He's handling the CSU summer algebra stuff for pre-algebra and algebra. We entrusted it to him because he is a very excellent teacher. 
and the details of math and your students will really appreciate his leadership. You've been teaching a little bit in school too, haven't you? Yes. All oh, right. I'm also, yes, a teacher for LAUSD, a substitute teacher right now for whatever subject they need me to do. And for these math classes, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to put in, I'm hoping to give students an opportunity to see real world applications of certain types of math to further like, to further encourage them to understand how important math can be for them. All right, good, good stuff. All right, I have with me also, uh, thank you, Jasiri. Uh, let's go down these TA. We had some great TAs this year. I'm gonna talk about Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Melissa, are you there? Yes, I'm here, sorry, I was having technical. Melissa, <laughs> Melissa's one of those people that has a lot of skill, been hanging around a while. How long have you been having the guts to hang around me? Think seven. Yeah, I'm gonna. We feel you're gonna be very helpful with our students flowing in and out of the campus and substituting <laughs> in some classes and team. We're gonna kind of have you as our utility person. Is that all right? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> you came out of West LA College. Which which two year college was? It? I yeah, West LA. And uh, you'll be going back to four year next year, God willing, right? Yes, that's yeah, the plan. Yeah, don't worry about hiatus right now. <laughs> yeah, well, we're excited to have you again this year. I'm so glad you're available and willing. I appreciate it very much. Then we have Jordan Kidd, who is a student at where, Jordan? I'd like to hear you say it. Hey, everyone. I attend Virginia Tech University. What'd you say? Um, Virginia Tech. Say that again. Yep, Virginia Tech all the oh, way man, the I, Yep, Virginia Tech, man. All right, well, we, we, we're great to have. This is his first year, but I think he's going to be one of these rookies of the year. He's going to be terrific. He's so good, we couldn't decide where to put him. But I think his place is going to be helping out with, with some of this calculus and some of the Lakewood stuff. He's helping me now get ready for calculus. He's teaching me what to teach. He just said no. I'm giving him a little task. I really appreciate you, Jordan, okay? Look forward to it, Deacon. All right. Then we have Kelly Richardson. We moved her into another slot. Hi, Kelly. Hello, I'm Kelly. Uh, so you're a student where? <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. there's noise in the background. That's OK. You're a student where? Uh, I'm a student at UCLA. I'm what did you say? Um, I go to UCLA. Oh, OK. I'm a rising third year. Yeah. Um, I've been with the church. Uh, I started taking classes. I think I was in like middle school here, like during yeah. the summers and things like that. And then in high school, I started coming more regularly during the school year. My junior year of high school, I started tutoring students. And uh, now I work as a tutor during the year part time. And now I'm going to TA summer classes. So I'm really excited. Looking forward to that. So you came up under uh, good old Rachel, huh? Yep, Rachel. Isn't that strange? Did you have deja vu earlier when she was speaking? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them how great she is. She's incredible, the best. And as you can say, like students come out of her class and get an A. I got an A in my AP bio class when I took it and college biology. I wouldn't say it was a breeze, it's still difficult, but I felt prepared going into it as well. So it's definitely worth it. We're glad to have you with us this year. And let's see, I got, uh, I believe I have one other person I'm gonna look for them. Well, I have my staff and my team. I usually introduce them here, but I'll just let you know Billy Salisbury does a lot of our writing. She'll be she'll be sending lots of the emails to your parents that we referred to. She has a great handle on the data because she handled all the inputting of data when you came in the program, and she did a lot of the emailing to you to keep you informed. Say hi, Bailey. Bailey is a graduate of GW. Well, let me say it again. Bailey is a graduate of GW. Hi, Bailey. Hey, Deacon. Why did I say it twice? Why, why did I say it twice? Why did you say what twice? That you're a graduate of GW. <laughs> I'm not sure. What? <laughs> oh, man. Because I'm an alum of George Washington University, guys, in D.C., and she went to GW also. She's a great graduate from there, and she'll be working out with me and, and, the, and the team working with Summer. Hopefully she'll be around a couple evenings to help. I'll have her in two places. I think she can handle it, though. And I'm trying to see, Quinn, are you there? Hi, Quinn. Hi, Hello. Quinn. Yeah, Hi. Quinn's, 
Quinn's a graduate of CSU Long Beach. Uh, how long have you been hanging around? Wait a minute. How long have you been hanging around? Um, for six years. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. But time flies and you're having fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sister Allison, I agree. I feel like that guy, I don't know if you know, the guy who runs the Avengers, Captain America or, or Professor X. These are very talented young people. They keep me straight. But Quinn, we really appreciate having you. You have a lot of gifts and talents. She did a lot of our pre-publicity and flyers and all kind of marketing. She works with the website. She's a website interface person. And we really appreciate you, Quinn. Thanks much. We're going to look at her as a being a TA to fill in some slots in Lakewood as well. Thank you, Quinn. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Sabri, how are you, Sabri? Hi, Deacon. I'm good. Did I, did I do what I promised? That's your teacher, oh. Andrea. Hey, Andrea, say hello to Sabri. Hi, Sabri. I remember Hi. your face. Yes, I, I had your dance class. Yes. yes, that's what it is. I was like, I know the name. And now that I see your face, I remember you. Hi. Hi. I, yes. I talked I talk to Sabri doing her applications to school, and she's our rising college freshman. She has a very great career plan. It caught my eye. I said, I got to have her working in the summer. She's uh, getting herself ready for four year, a very unusual way, very sharp and talented. She's going to be a TA for eighth and ninth, uh, eighth and ninth. And I'm going to see what I can do with her about high school and see what she's going to say. I haven't told her that yet officially, but I think she knows we're heading that way. She can tell because yeah. uh, I had to get you and Drea together. Yeah, I'm definitely prepared. I took um, creative writing classes during my senior year, mm -hmm. and um, I've done many, many argument papers during my high school years. Um, I already took an El Camino um, semester of English. I know. So I am ready for this, and I'm very excited. I like English, so I'm excited. We're excited to have you, Sabri. Yeah, we, we knew that we had that slot off. We filled that one early. I think we talked very early, didn't we? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. And let me see if anybody else snuck in on me. I see Jordana. Hi, Jordana. Hello, Deacon. So where are you going to school in the fall? I seem to have forgotten. Um, I will also be attending GW. What'd you say? George Washington, GWU. The George Washington University. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, Jordana is the sister of Ileani Lambe, of course. And uh, also AGM, I don't know if we'll have her this summer, but we've had all three of them. Jordana was funny because I was traveling to DC with her. And I said, what are you doing this summer? And she said, I'm working for you. I hadn't even asked her yet. <laughs> but she would be, she's a great addition to the program. We'll be figuring out exactly, we think you could help us with logistics, with attendance, maybe work close with Larry. We'll have it all figured out. Have you do a little TA work as a sub TA. You'll, you'll be plenty busy this summer, okay? Okay. All right. I think I caught everybody, Nicole. Did I forget anybody, Nicole? I think I got everybody. I think you did. With that, I'll throw it back to you. And I, I agree with the two parents posted that we have a great team. This is an unbelievable, you have no idea. This is an unbelievable team. All right? Okay, go ahead, Nicole, throw it back. Uh, well, Larry, uh, you yeah. want to formally introduce yourself as well oh, I oh yeah okay yeah uh, my name is larry as you guys know i'm one of the i'm the assistant coordinator for the summer bridge program i went to school i got my degree in, in criminal justice from sacramento state university i'm working down here with deacons for about four years now since 2018 summer 2018 and i'm also one of the coordinators for the homework program which that which we've been having going on again this upcoming school year the homework club so that's going to be coming up again so please if you guys have students who need any assistance in any areas of math reading writing uh spanish we have spanish tutors please get them connected with us and um i'm also working with uh beverly hills police department as well so i'm, I'm all over the place i have a, a lot of different roles here and also in my personal life so I'm also here to help in any way possible. All right, we'll continue on. Okay, so some of the supplies, and we had a few questions. There's one question there. Hey, Sister Sylvia, um, I, I wanna have a separate telephone call about, about your situation there, okay? Separate call, and I just noticed it before the meeting. Okay, go ahead, Brother Larry. 
Yeah, no there, problem. Is there, if there's so, a hand raised there, Christina, let him know if he has a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so I know there's been uh, quite a few questions in regards to supplies and materials for each of the courses. So each teacher is gonna inform you guys about which supplies they specifically will require, but as a program, it's recommended to have the following minimum supplies to participate. So a computer, a laptop, iPad, or tablet is, is great because a lot of the classes may not have these uh, instruments available to you. So it's good to bring them in if you guys can do any research or look up definitions or if your teacher wants you guys to have something to do online work, it's good to have these items. Uh, notebooks, of course, are always recommended, pencils and pens. And like I said, other items will be directed by the teachers. So they'll be directly contacting the parents that are registered for the program um, through email. And it'll also be in their syllabi as well, the type of supplies that they would like for you guys to have. So. Next slide. All righty. So um, I think it's you, Nicole. Yes. Um, so I want to add that if your student um, needs any technical, um, like a laptop or anything like that, please mm -hmm. alert us. We do have a small supply. We actually um, got much better this week. So okay. we, could even we could even tell them optional. That just happened yesterday. We're going to have... Just let you know, we're going to have 11 desktops. Okay. We're going to have 13 laptops. We think that's going to be enough to handle each class one at a time in SAI, plus have a couple of extras. I like uh, Andrea's idea of using a cell phone. Okay. Yes. Well, we have more of a supply. so It got um, better. Yes. So we do encourage them to bring their own, but again, we have a supply now. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will formally introduce myself. Um, yeah, do that. <laughs> uh, I am legally Nicole Haynes. And so um, I graduated with uh, my last degree was uh, my master's from Cal State Dominguez in social work. Um, I am just months away from getting my license as a licensed clinical social worker. Nice. And um, I work for the Department of Children and Family Services um, as a children's social worker in adoptions. And I've been helping coordinate the summer bridge program and the after school program, the virtual homework club, but you know, we're crossing our fingers that will just be the homework program yes. um, this fall um, for many years. And so that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> um, Where'd you get your undergraduate degree? Um, I started at UC Riverside. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Go ahead. And then I graduated from California Lutheran University. Nice. Which is a great story someday we'll tell you. Go ahead. Uh, so this is the program schedule for your students. Um, the three-week courses may not be following, so do not just start your first week as week one for the three-week schedule. Um, please talk to the instructor about when your first week is. But for the five week courses, week one starts on uh, Tuesday. Um, please note if you did not get the alerts that our schedule has changed from Monday through Thursday to Tuesday through Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so now week two, you have two days off. So please put in your calendars that um, that Tuesday is off. So our program doesn't run on Mondays anymore. So now you also have that Tuesday off for week two. And then again, week six is just for SAI. That is algebra one and pre-algebra. Um, and again, that is for both campuses, the Lakewood and the LA campus. And then we have some very exciting parent nights. So you will definitely want to put these on your calendars, make adjustments to show up. These are some great speakers. Um, Deacon also speaks on these nights as well. So you'll get some really good college information. 
Um, Eric Moore created a pamphlet that really helps and guides your students on how to get to college. And I think it even starts in middle school. So they're really good mm-hmm. steps um, to help you out. And Dr. Uh, Corliss Bennett is, she is magnificent. So you want to hear her speak and get motivated to go to college. You probably want to have your students there. Is that correct, Deacon? Yeah, yeah. Students can come to both these nights, actually. But we want to make sure the parent, they call them parent nights, but students are definitely welcome, especially when Corliss Bennett is there. Mm-hmm. Definitely for the uh, Corliss Bennett one, because uh, they definitely should hear the things that she has to say. She She's the highlight of the summer. Um, and then for SAI, again, we have a culmination ceremony. Um, this is just to highlight their achievements for the summer and so you can see the activities that they've uh, completed and uh, celebrate, you know, what they've accomplished. All righty, so now we'll just cover some of the expectations that we have of the students. So we'd like to start, we want all our students to be punctual. Students, they should, should arrive on time to each class session and be on time for instruction. That's very important because a lot of students miss time and and you get the most out of the program that you're available to when you're arriving each day and you're on time. So please try to make sure parents and students to be there on time. Um, Respectful. We want the students to treat each other and all staff members in an appropriate manner. That's pretty self-explanatory. Please treat your teachers as you would treat your teachers in school and please treat our the staff members and volunteers as you would want to be treated as well. Um, communication. Let's have an open line of communication with our instructors about questions and concerns that you may have. And also parents feel free to email and reach out to instructors and TAs if you have any questions in regards to the material or scheduling or just anything like that. Feel free to keep that communication open. And um, also effort. We want all of the students to uh, get, get their full effort with everything that they're doing in this class or in these classroom settings because you're gonna get the most that you put into it. So that's what we try to tell each of the students, just to give it your all so that you can improve as well during this time. And also another side note is please just inform the teachers if you need any special consideration for any physical impairment or learning disabilities that your students may have, that goes in line with uh, communication. Just keep that open for, uh, for us to know about. And also here's just some last um, expectations that we have with students. Please dress appropriately, which is pretty self-explanatory. Dress as you, well, I'm not sure how you would dress for school. I'm not sure how they dress at school these days, but just be appropriate. It is a church campus, so please make sure to dress appropriately. I use appropriate language. Do not be disruptive. Um, effective note-taking during the lectures as well. Make sure, because these are this information is stuff that you're going to take into your next year. So try to take good notes that you can utilize them over the school year. Um, complete assigned work, treat it as if it's an actual class that you're going to be going to in school, prepare for quizzes and tests, seek help from the TAs because they are there to help you in any way that you may need it, and also uh, be attentive and cooperate in class. So these are just a few things and expectations that we will have for the students, and we expect you guys, you know, to follow this. And this is for you, Nicole. Um, I do want to add just some examples of dressing appropriately. Um, I think uh, like no thong sandals, uh, just for safety reasons. Kids are, you know, run around, trip and fall. Um, So if they are wearing sandals, try to have them to have backs on it. I know they like to wear slides and things like that. So uh, try to have them wear sandals with backs on it. Um, Shorts should be kind of to their knees, um, with boys, you know, not too baggy. Um, what else have we said in the past? Um, like no, uh, what do they call it? Wife beaters for the, the boys. Um, so no tank tops without shirts. Yeah. A shirt on under there. So those are just some examples of, you know, because it is summer, it's hot, we understand, we we don't want to overheat them, but we do want them to dress appropriately. Um, So 
Some special um, considerations we would like you to uh, think of is please notify us if um, your child is going home with someone else other than, you know, their the parents. So if you need them to go home with another child in the program or if um, a relative or a neighbor or something is coming to pick them up, please notify us so that we are aware that we are sending your child home with the correct person. Um, we do monitor yes. that. Yes, um, Deacon, you were saying Yeah, something? yeah, that's absolutely important. Yes. Um, and if this is going to be a regular thing, um, just alert us um, like emergency contact. Um, we used to have it on paper. I'm not sure if that was part of the registration form. Um, so just add that. And then um, we would love for you to arrange um, for pickups, uh, especially once it gets dark um, for again, a person that you know and trust, if not yourself, to pick up your child and not, for it not to be the bus or train, but we understand if it needs to be. Um, but please alert us again, if your child will be taking the bus or train, again, for safety reasons, uh, we don't want uh, a child to tell us that they're taking the bus or train and then you come and show up and they weren't supposed to be taking that uh, form of transportation. Um, and if you can please pick up your children by 8.15 p.m. Um, once their class ends, if you can be there on time to pick them up, we have staff waiting. We don't want to keep them there all night. If you're going to be late, again, if you can communicate that to us, it'll be appreciated. Um, if your student needs to leave early um, from class, um, just alert the teacher. Again, it's just like being absent. You want to talk to the teacher and see if there's any assignments or anything that they need to catch up on. Um, although it is a summer course, we like to keep the students on track. Um, and one of the TA's roles are to, you know, pull them aside um, if they need to um, catch up. And so we want to be prepared for um, like maybe the next day we need to have them sit with the tutor to get the materials or maybe we'll send them home with the work that they're doing in class so that they stay on track. So it looks like now we're just at the question and answer portion. We've kind of been doing a uh question and answer throughout the entire evening, but I guess we have some stuff in the chat, Deacon, or however we're doing it, Christina's reading them out. How, how do you want to do it? Christina, am I caught up? Oh, I see. There's yes, one. you're good. Yeah, and, uh, Sister Janet uh, asked a good question. Geometry is a five-week course. And Yard's just not here today. I know you know Yard, uh, Jan Sister Janet, he's told me he couldn't make it today, but he is the teacher for that class. And as you know, he's the bomb. <laughs> Sorry to be, you know what I mean, Sister Janet. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if there's no other questions, then we have reached the end of our, of our orientation. Well, for parents, again, I wanna thank you for coming. Uh, it's been great having you here. Uh, get a hold of us. Watch your email close. I should say that again. Please, please. I know you're busy, but we the only way we have to communicate with you is email. Like even at night, about you're about 40% of the school. The other 60 weren't here. I'm nervous, like nervous as well. That's why I'm bald, by the way. Uh, but uh <laughs> but please watch your email close. That's my primary way of keeping in touch with you. And I said this year we're gonna be sending out information. Uh, the teachers will have those email addresses a lot earlier this year. Sister Michelet has a question. Uh, let me see. I can, I can. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Sister Thorpe's. Hold on, Michelet. I'm going to let you talk. Okay, hold on. I can make that happen for you. I see Sister Boyd is here. Uh, hold on. I'm almost there. There I am. Sister Boyd. 
If you had a question, speak right up. Open your mic up. Oh. Go right ahead. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you didn't go over biology, though. Well, actually, so, we, like, did, we did kind of. The teacher is, is Rachel Sturgill. Mm -hmm. say, okay. hi. say hi again, Rachel, so as you can see. Maybe you weren't here at that moment. Good old, okay. good old Rachel's the teacher. Okay. And uh, okay. she's going to really get her a good exposure to biology, have her ready for AP biology. Okay. Yes. All right. I knew, Maybe I missed it. Yeah, when you get the All video, right. you'll be able to look at that part again. Okay. Going to send the video out to parents, too. I'll give you a link to it. And all you hear will get a link to the video, but you'll be on our YouTube, on our YouTube channel. In fact, when you go there and listen to it, if you like what you see there, please subscribe. And uh, so you can keep informed that way, too. We'll drop videos during the summer of the actual school, and we'll be doing videotaping around the school. We hired someone uh, that we believe can get that done very well. So uh, watch, your, watch your email. That's the key. Watch out <laughs> your your artist palm diggity. Yeah, you 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 did you got me one up there, Sister Janet. She's one of our great parents. She's been around for a while. She's a very wise lady and uh taking care of the youth in the community. She thinks I don't know that, but I really appreciate her very much. All right. I think we have another question. Um, what's the best number to call to alert you of late arrival? That's a good question. Uh I'll get let me get a hold of my team. Find out how we want to do later rivals. We're going to be out on the floor a lot this year. And I, so we won't be next to a phone. We'll probably have one of us doing nothing but watch their phone. It sounds like the kind of thing that one of my people who are out in the field will do, like if Melissa or Jordana or me, maybe you'll be able to text that way. And then, of course, we'll let the teacher know too. And you want to email the teacher as well. Yeah, I think teachers can also are going to be a key here. You can need to email them, hey, we missed today. And then you can let us know too. That'd be nice. Okay. I mean, you can't always do it as a parent, but at least get to that teacher so that teacher can get some kind of frame of reference. How was that as an answer, okay. Nicole? Did I miss anything? No, sounds good. Okay. All right. I believe there are no other questions. He said with great hesitancy. I know. No questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Call me. Call me, Christine, Christiana. Give me about 15 minutes to get some water and call us. I want to talk to you for sure. Okay. All right. And maybe I should figure out a way to get Larry involved, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Thank you all very much. We'll see you around. Can't wait to see you on Tuesday. Not Monday, Tuesday, the 28th. There were a couple of questions about that. It's the 28th, 28th, all right? Glad you liked the session. We appreciate you all commenting on that. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Hey, Deacon. Yes, who's that? Can, this is Paul. Hey, Paul. Can me, you, and Larry potentially stay back for just a few minutes? Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do. Hold or, on. Or are you... I'm not technically sound. Just a minute. Hold on. I want to make sure we only, it's only us. Stand by. Just stand by. In fact, you know, Christiana, you stand by for a minute if you want. Um, Deacon, you can just take 